So for, for people grieving, it's, it's not when people are around, you know. The heart is always, you know, when you're alone. Mm -hmm. Or when the people that have come to commiserate, commiserate with you, whatever, mm. have gone. Mm. When the reality begins to sink in. Yeah, that's like the aftermath. So. Yeah, when the children begin to ask questions, mm. you know. And for me, sometimes I, I would give them answers. Sometimes I don't know the answers. So, mm. you know, I'll just tell them, I don't know. We'll just pray about it and all that. But basically, the only thing that I'll say helped us with the aftermath of dealing with grief was God. Mm. God was closer to me than ever before in my life. You know, I felt his presence. I could hear him say the words, you know, of mm. comfort to me and speak to me in dreams and, you know, through his word. Mm. Definitely, I wouldn't have gotten through this if God hadn't been my ever present help oh. in time of me. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's amazing. I, I feel like when the haze clears of whatever jubilation or pain is when the person really goes goes through an experience, which is why I wanted her to touch on the aftermath. And like she has said, God was the center of it all that helped her. Because in the night now, you know, even if her mom, for example, wants to help her, if she's not living in the same building with you, there's really nothing. Or even in the same room. Or even in the same room with yeah. you. There's really nothing the person can do. The Funny enough, the person can even be in the same, same room with you and the person will be sleeping. Yeah. And you're awake. Your yeah. eyes may be closed, but yeah. you'll be probably grieving or crying. Yeah. Or, you know. So if you don't have something within you yeah. that you've tapped into, which for us is God that you can connect to, then what helps you in that time? Because God forbid, if she had done anything to herself in those times, nobody would have been there to stop her. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like it would have been so it was the it was god within her that helped her in that time to understand i believe that after crying you can rise up yeah like after this pain um i'm here you know there's something about um i was telling my sister there's something about feeling like god sees me mm. you know like i'm seen you know in the midst of it's almost like imagine people go a dignitary goes somewhere for example and we're even talking now of a dignitary and then the MC doesn't remember to call them. The person may feel smaller because it's almost like I'm not seen. Mm. But then this is how many human beings, and then for her to realize in that moment that God still sees me, mm. that had to have been like an assurance of, okay, tomorrow will be fine. Tomorrow will be okay. But then I know that some of the challenges that people who have um, lost spouses feel like they have to deal with now is even especially if you're a woman is financial body and then learning to train the children alone because beyond sending them to school there are probably certain things that you know you do or your husband was responsible for doing with regards to training them not just financially but maybe he was the one who did the devotions for example or you know those sort of things so how did you ease yourself or how did you bring yourself into now having to you know bear everything like financially and you know training the children like in general yeah so for me when it happened the first thing you know i i told a couple of friends that i i didn't want to think a week in fact i didn't want to take a few days mm. from today because anytime i tried to think about even next tomorrow or next week i just felt like my head was going to break some like physical pain yeah so it was just like you know what go on this journey one day at a time mm. and that helped me so i just took it one day at a time you know i wake up every day the days i feel like laughing i laugh. the days i feel i don't feel like it i don't but i also decided to go on a spiritual journey in which i was just praying to god and asking him to show me what to do with my life because at that moment everything left lost meaning for me I didn't feel like my business anymore. I didn't mm, feel like going to my business. I didn't feel like going to work mm. at the university. I didn't feel like doing anything. I just felt like you know, I don't know what to do with my. I felt like I was at a crossroad mm. as to what am I going to do with my life? Where do I move on from here? Mm. So I asked God, you know, what do I do? You know, I just didn't see myself doing any of that. So um, I just 
kept taking it one day at a time and as the days unfolded it became clearer and clearer to me the direction which god was leading me you know i started i just found i woke up one day and i found zeal to go back to my business you know mm. i found the in fact it happened in december by january yeah by january we had done a training mm. sponsored by techno you know for some processes no yeah in kaduna the, in, at smiley's mobile kitchen there was a training that was mm -hmm. done you know so i found the zeal to go back and i felt that was just god leading me mm. some months down the line i had the impression to resign mm. from my job so i put in my letter for resignation from my job you know as and unfortunately that didn't pan out as i wanted mm. and so eventually i had to write again and um it ended up being a two-year leave of absence, mm. which I'm still on, which is renewable again after mm. two years. Mm. So, yeah. So, but God just directed my steps. Mm. And um, many people were coming in, giving their advice, you know, widows, two elderly widows. Um, there were some very key advice that I received that I feel really helped me. One, one woman that told me, the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you, but you have to let him. Mm. and i realized that there were some times that i refused to allow the holy spirit to comfort me you know you get to a point in grief where you just want to hold on to that grief maybe because it makes you feel closer to the one you loved and lost or whatever but sometimes you don't even want it's like when a baby is crying now and the mother tries to comfort the child mm. there are times the baby does not want to be comforted mm. Is that kind of a situation I was like let me cry let me cry yes i want to cry that kind of a thing but if we let the holy spirit he does actually comfort us mm. yeah and so when i got a hold of that truth i started opening up myself to allow the holy spirit to comfort me i stopped resisting his comfort i stopped resisting him and truthfully he opened me up to dimensions mm. of things he wanted me to do steps he wanted me to take i found i found the strength to be able to in that period i published my first book which was a mm. devotional book shortly after that so i actually found myself in in losing in this you know whole letting go so yes to say. i found myself i found purpose i found a reason to leave and Direction, all that so I guess. and then one thing i must add because she brought she talked about financial burden is that it brings me back to another advice that was given me which was that you know which is in the word of god basically but it was reiterated by somebody which is that you know god is the husband of the widow mm. and the father of the fatherless mm. and so the advice was you know god will not leave you god will not abandon you just hold on to him mm. because truthfully people will make promises to you you know when you especially with young children i know many people make promises during the burial many people tell you if you have any need come to them and all that but one thing i made up my mind to do once i got this revelation was lord you've said this to me you are my husband now you are the father to these children i am never i am not and i'm never going to have to ask or run to anybody to help me or to borrow or to beg or to plead with them to support me you are going to handle everything and i must tell you between man and god between me and god god has never for once mm. let me down like i feel like whether it's in my business or my work you know my job you which is Pen, pen yeah in and out at the moment or whatever god has not let me since this thing happened mm. even when i have a need that seems so big and so daunting the truth is that once i have thought about it, it's a need uh, it's great i just find answers i just find provision god sends help you know without me even asking and then if it is even a matter that is so critical or so dire that i have to go to god to cry Baba, I'm coming. That I have to go to God to cry for. Like, once I go on my knees or fall on the floor and just cry about it to God. It's like, eh? You know how, you know, a, a husband reacts when his wife has been. Maybe the wife comes and tells her husband, ah, somebody look for my trouble. You know how that's that husband, ooh. 
Let me handle kind of. That's how I see God, you know, just not like. Sorry about that. So she was trying to think and um, talk to us on financial burdens and then training children, like doing it by herself, so to say. And I remember you were talking about um, how you decided that God would be the one that helps you and how you, you experienced almost in a, almost in every instance, should I say, like when you have this need, it's like so, suddenly, you know, God arises and the situation, you know, gets sorted out. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just making a point that, you know, God is true to his word. Once he says that he is the father of the fatherless husband of the widow, he does it. He means it. And it was my own experience. Like, at any point, you know, he always showed up and showed up well. Mm. And if it was a matter that I had to cry out to God for help, it was almost like, you know what, I've got this. Mm. You know, just handles it in his mm. own way. Um, automatic. So I just realized that we missed out some footage mm -hmm. so i'm going to give her um my book so that she can just run through some of the things that she had already spoken about briefly um okay so um like she, was, she had already spoken about financial burden and training children she had spoken about the role of support and plans for the future and even advice for widows and she was on her memorable experience so if you can just give us like maybe 30 seconds on each of these things 30 okay. seconds clip yeah so i can basically say for financial burdens mm -hmm. um people will not necessarily always keep your their promises to you mm -hmm. so that is why i'll advise every widow to look up to god yeah because once he said it in his word that he's the father of the fatherless mm -hmm. and the husband to the window mm -hmm. he means it mm -hmm. and he actually does that mm -hmm. so there's no point in time that i've cried to him for help that he hasn't come true mm -hmm. so look up to god mm -hmm. Find yourself in God. When you find yourself in God, he gives you, he is the center of your joy, your peace, your comfort. He gives you purpose. So I'm able to find myself and do everything about my business and take care of my family because I found myself in him. You know, so I would advise every widow or anybody that goes through this kind of loss or challenge in their life is to find yourself in God. Because you cannot depend on any external thing for your satisfaction, your peace, your joy, your hope. Um, another thing I would say is, for raising children, I found myself in a position where I could no longer transfer the responsibility to anybody. I had to show that it all. So, I had to depend on God and I found that I was able to grow in leaps and bounds. I'm still on, nobody gets to the point where you say you've grown in your Christian race, but he gives you understanding. He helps you to be able to understand his word and explain it to the children in ways that they can understand. Mm. And without struggling, because that's another thing, sometimes um, without God's help, you struggle to even read the word of God and explain it to these children to understand. So God really helped me in that aspect, you know. Um, my relationship with him grew, and uh, I was able to even publish a devotional during this period, you know of my loss and so yes he took me to greater dimensions in my relationship with him so that was a plus and by the way i'll put a link to her book also in so there's so many links that you should check out in this particular video the link to her book um two of her books actually because she has two books now will be in the description box you can also get them on amazon so it's there are books that you can get internationally too so people who are watching from outside the country from outside nigeria basically and who wants to get this book it's still possible to get the books and so now she's going to um, basically summarize what she had said about the role of support and then plans for the future yeah so having a good support system girlfriends that were always there for me i remember during my birthday shortly after the burial my friends you know rallied themselves together organized like a getaway for me to, apart from my you know home life and responsibilities where i was able to rest they pampered me i can ha i still have one of the gifts from that birthday it's a bracelet with the engravings god is within her she shall not fall you know so just that kind of support system so strong the love so real from time to time they send help and all that but i would advise every widow do not look to people to find that support to find that joy to find what you need because even people that want to help you mm. sometimes they don't even have what it takes to help you they have their own needs mm. they have their own challenges and if god doesn't help them they cannot even help you so look up to god you know and that's the one of the advice I'll give. Allow yourself grieve, process the grief, 
and allow the Holy Spirit to comfort you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need a relationship with him to be able to get through the process of grieving. And when the Holy Spirit wants to comfort you, open up yourself to receive his comfort. Do not look to human beings for any kind of... Um, yeah, human beings are good, they will mm. help you, but that should not be your focus. Whether it's find material things, whether it is helping you raise the children or whatever you need, find it in God. He'll give you purpose for your life. He'll so, um, you were finishing up on advice for widows, and I think you had a little bit about plans for the future. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, like I said earlier, advice for the widows would be they should put their trust in God alone. Mm. You know, look up to Him. Um, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. Mm. Whether it's wisdom, whether it's resources, whatever you need, God mm. provides all that. Mm. And um, plans for the future. For me, right now, I don't really make plans per se. Mm. I just ask God, see, let me know your will and mm. let me work in it. That's been my prayer point for some time now. Knowing what God wants me to do and working in that, you know. And it's more like, just leave me there after the one step at a time mm. um not that i don't still do the things that i have to mm. but i don't necessarily you know yeah depend on myself or any other person and say okay this is this and this are how i want my life to go and the things i need to do because mm. things don't necessarily always plan pan out the way we plan them mm. and that's why the scripture says that it is in the heart of man to plan and all that mm. but it is god that you know brings those plans mm. to pass mm. and um yeah, you asked me about a memory. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm grateful to God that we we're able to save up something when we married to go on a honeymoon. That was an advice that someone gave me and I took very seriously. We took very seriously and um, shortly, we, we went for a honeymoon and funny enough, that's the only trip that we were able to make together as husband and wife, you know, responsibilities and life just happens and you don't even get the resources or the time to go on another trip like that. So I would advise any young couple to plan for a honeymoon. Yeah, it's very good. I still have fond, beautiful memories of our honeymoon and I'm somebody that has always liked taking pictures. I'm grateful to God about that passion because I just think about it and say, what if I didn't like or love pictures this much i used to capture the moment so i'm grateful to god that the children have so many pictures that they can look at of memories of them and their even videos you know from that time i do videos so you know they, they they look we look back together sometimes we laugh sometimes you know it's nostalgic and all that but i'm really i'm, I'm really glad that i was able to capture some of these moments my husband was also into photography he loved pictures so yeah, we have so many he was really memories. great behind the scenes too. Like he was, he was, yeah. he was good. Yeah. So that that is something that is like priceless for me right now. Mm. Um, yeah, those are some of the things I would remember. Oh, nice. Thank you so much. You're, You're welcome. Been, You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure having this conversation. Yes, so I'm so grateful that she, that she agreed to do this, that she came to do this, and that we get to publish the video for people for people to watch. There were different times doing the video. I thought the tears are coming, they're coming, they're coming now. But just just hold it back because how do you encourage somebody who is in the middle of it if you just lose your own self? So I'm um, thank you for for doing this. Thank you for being an encouragement to me and to many people. Like if you are in some ways loosely or closely in my circle, you would have heard her name one way or the other, and that is testament to um, the influence and the impact that she has been um, on my life so it is um, a learning experience to watch her go through it and to basically submit herself and um, to learn even from God and to be open to advice you know and to grow in, even in the midst of it um, so I know we a I asked you a number of questions but I don't know if there was anything that you wanted to say that I didn't ask that you do so um what will I say for last words? I'll just say um, nobody plans for deaths or something like this to happen. You don't even think about it most times, but life happens, you know. And the fact that something this tragic happens to you does not mean that God doesn't love you. Don't let anybody make you feel guilty. Um, it's a result of maybe some actions you have done or somebody somewhere had done. It, life happens to everybody, even the best of us, you know. 
we don't have control so over some of these things and um, the moment you understand that it will help you in times of grief mm. to know that even when this happens like job even when that happened to him it was not because he wasn't loved by god mm. you are still loved by god he's still very much interested mm. in you mm. he still cares about you mm. and he will still give you grace to go through whatever it is that life brings your way Okay then, thank you for watching. Um, I hope that you give this video a thumbs up. I hope you even share it to people in your life who you know have had an experience of losing someone or even losing something that has left them devastated. I'm sure that there's something that they will hear in this video that would jolt them back um, to where God wants them to be. So, bye. Bye-bye. Oh,